there isn't actually that much to do if what you want to end up with is Y equals MX plus B. Now, what I want you to do is, because I asked you if you were in a pair, um, to start with two different points. One, some of you started with P and some of you started with Q. Now, if you've put it in Y equals MX plus B form, regardless of which point you started with, you should find that you end with this guy, okay? Now, just think about this for a second, right? That shouldn't be surprising. You're both finding the equation of the same line, right? Uh, and you know that they both should be on there. But this should be a little should be a little weird. Why does it happen? If, unlike me, you chose um, the left-hand point, or you got told to do the left-hand point, okay? You would have had AQ squared here, AQ squared over here. And then when you expanded out the right-hand side, you would have had the same AQ squared there. Or you might have had it, if you did your order right, you'd have it here and your APQ would be over here, right? So the same terms would cancel out on both sides and you'd be left with the same thing at the bottom, okay? So there's my M, that half P plus Q I already identified, the gradient. And there would be my corresponding y-intercept, B, okay? Now, it's just worth noting, okay? The fact that you could put in P or Q, P or Q, and you will get the same thing at the other end. This has a little um, a name. This is called symmetric in whichever variables you put in, you will get the same thing at the other end, okay? Because a chord, PQ, is the same as the chord QP, it's the same line, okay? So we call this equation symmetric in P and Q. And there will be a variety of other ones that we get where regardless of which one you put in, it doesn't matter, you'll get the same thing because it's the same line, okay? Right, so let me um, mention again, this is the first, I'll put a box around it, this is the first of a series of equations that you will meet under parametrics um, of the parabola. You do not need to memorize them. You do not need to memorize them. In fact, memorizing them um, and reproducing them in an exam is a problem because often you'll be asked to prove this guy, okay? Um, you won't be able to just say, quote, da 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 da, and there, there's what I have as a, an equation, right? right? You'll be given points, and you'll have to prove that this is the case, or alternatively, if the question is being nice, or it's trying to assess something else, they will say, the equation of a chord is, da da da, and, do not prove this. They will actually tell you not to prove it. The HSC does it, we do it, because sometimes the focus is not on this process, but on can you use this for something else, okay? So therefore, don't memorize it. But I would like you to look at it and say, okay, I generally get what that looks like, and if I see it again, I'll recognize it. And I'll think, yeah, this is what I was supposed to get. I can march on now. Something interesting before, we, uh, before I show you the animation, okay? This chord is any chord, PQ, regardless of where P and Q could be on the parabola. But there's a particular family of chords that is more interesting. Uh, namely, I guess on this one, it'll be somewhere around here. The set of chords that pass through the focus, okay? Uh, those chords, because they pass through the focus, are called focal chords. So if I have a chord like, say, here we go, I'll draw it off the different. If I've got a chord, that goes through anywhere, but it passes through S, which is, on this one, 0A. And obviously, if I had some kind of shift or it was upside down, it would be elsewhere and I'd have corresponding coordinates. We call this guy a focal chord. Now, focal chords are kind of interesting, and it's really easy to see why. If this is the equation of a chord, right, and it passes through the focus, that means 0A should satisfy this equation, right? It should satisfy that guy. So I'm going to say, if... PQ is a focal chord. Then I should be able to put in these coordinates and out will come something true, right? Because it should be able to satisfy this equation. So zero is my X coordinate and A will be my Y coordinate. Let's pop this in and see what happens, okay? There's my Y coordinate. Because X is zero, all of this becomes zero. And there's that y intercept hanging over on the right hand side. Now you look at that and you're like, hold on a second. If I just rearrange this just a little bit, right? Assuming that a is not zero, because I'm going to divide through by it in a second, okay? Alan pops this. Now remember, we established last lesson, and I just reminded you again this morning what are p and q? Gradients. P and q are the gradients of these two points, right? These two points here and here, or, or there and there, or wherever you like, right? So what this is telling you, right? 
because because these are gradients, this is this situation, right? Or I should say this. Right? That's what it really means. And of course, you know what it means when gradients multiply together to give negative one. It means that these two guys here and their tangents, oh dear, this will not work well. That you use your imagination, okay? They're gonna be perpendicular, right? Now, rather than showing you some like not very accurate diagram, let me actually show you what it's gonna look like. Jay, do you mind spinning this around for me? I actually got like an exact right angle online. Wow, I'm impressed. Good job. Um, Thank you, that's perfect. You might have to tap on the screen because it's super bright, I would imagine. Yeah. Thanks, that's great. Uh, Alright, so here's our parabola, okay? Now, you can, by the way, you can completely replicate what I've done here. Or I can, even, I can send you the link, but it's more fun to actually just do it by yourself. Uh, I just typed in x squared equals 4ay. When you do that, um, because it recognizes x and y as the, you know, your coordinate axes, it says it starts to graph, but then it says, well, what's a? Like, do you want A to be something? So you, you click on the button, you get a slider for that. You've done this before, okay? Once you've done that, you get this graph, okay? You can put in the coordinates of the focus, because it's just gonna be zero A, and it'll pop in, let's put him in here. There we go, okay? And you can see, if I want to, I can change this parabola to be, or we can make it a bit thinner, and the focus drops in closer to the parabola, because the focal length is smaller. Or I could make it fatter, there we go. And the focal length is larger, so that's why the focus moves away from the vertex. You see that? My focal length here has increased. If I had the directrix on here, it happens to be not very interesting, but it would drop down lower. Okay? So let's put A back at a nice normal value. Okay, now what you can then do is say, well, I want, I'm interested in a pair of points, 2AP, AP squared, 2AQ, AQ squared, and when you start to type that in, you'll say, well, what's Q and what's P? So you can add some sliders for those. Now, you have a look, right? Where are my P and Q at the moment? Here's P, right? Now it's 0 0.6, 0 0.6. What does this tell you about P? It's the, uh, it's the orange point. Can you see it there? Orange, orange, okay? What does 0 0.6 mean? The gradient. It's the gradient. That looks about right, doesn't it? You can see it's a pretty shallow kind of line. And if, of course, I increase it, something like this, you can see it moves off to somewhere where there's a corresponding gradient. I guess the gradient at that point would be 2.3. Okay. And Q, I've got over here on the other side. Q is our red point over the left-hand side. Why is it on the left-hand side? It's negative. Because I want a gradient that's negative. And the only place on this parabola where the gradient is negative is over there on the negative x values. Okay. So you can recognize down here underneath my coordinates, there's our equation that we've just derived. Right, so let's check it in here. Okay. So there's my focal chord. Uh, sorry, there's my chord. It's just any old chord, and I can move P and Q any which way I like, and you will see the chord goes and follows it. Okay. Oh, now, yeah. if I want a focal chord, right, then this quality must be true. This quality must be true. So there's a variety of ways you can do that on here, but what I could do is I could lock in one of the parameters. For example, I could lock in Q and say, if they multiply to be minus one, then one has to be the negative reciprocal of the other. Do you agree with that? Like that's another way to see the gradients of the particular. So let's do that. Let's replace this guy with this. Okay, so what can you see now, right? As expected, there was my, um, my green point in the middle there, which we, we, we define as the focus. I can move the focus somewhere else if I like, and it will still do its thing, right? There you go, okay. And as I move around, as I change where the points are, you're always going to get something passing through the focus, okay? Now, just to show you again what I tried to do but, but failed because my whiteboard illustration was not very accurate, okay? If those gradients should multiply together to give this, then, spoilers will do this after the AP2s, if I put in those two tangents, here and here, right? Can you see wherever I go, Let's move P around now. You can see the tangents are always going to be perpendicular if the chord passes through the focus. Is this okay. a theorem? Yeah, well, well, it's the theorem I get out of this, okay. right? But if it goes through the focus, it has to do this. They have to be at right angles to each other, okay? 